Good morning and welcome to part one of Pennsylvania Stream. Uh, part one is block in and I'll explain all that to you in the 35 minute video. So uh, what I provide here for you is uh, lessons every week, usually three per painting and uh, that's uh, what I'm doing this week. So um, that service gives you the ability to paint on a consistent basis in studio and that's only one part, so I'm only one part of your um, education to get good. And to get good you need to paint with people like me on a consistent basis. Get critiques uh, from reputable people, I'd be glad to do that to you. And three, get outside and paint. So that's the uh, main story and theme that I will continue to say every time I have a chance to talk to you about it. So if you like my video, subscribe. Uh, please leave me comments, uh, you YouTubers, and um, I will answer them and I get a lot from them. So your comments are extremely important. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with today's painting. Thanks very much for tuning in. Bye-bye. Good morning and welcome to uh, Pennsylvania Stream. Uh, this fall I was um, in York, Pennsylvania. And um, on a bicycle trip with my brother, we came across this uh, when we went over a little bridge. They have a lot of bicycle paths through that part of Pennsylvania. And um, it's a beautiful part of Pennsylvania. And... Um, they have these little chalk streams running all over the place. So that's the story behind the um, reference. I chose it because I just like there's a really interesting abstract foreground and some nice darks uh, back here in these trees, as well as these uh, greens that really pop out. So I thought, hey, what a nice, um, what a nice reference for uh, this week's painting. So that's the story on that. Here's the um, materials I'm going to use. I'm going to use a limited palette, which you can find on um, my website, georgecallgreatart.com. I'm using a 10, uh, looks like a 6, a 2, and a scrubber, an old bright that's all worn down. And uh, probably use my palette knives here and a uh, razor blade scraper to make sure I have a lot of mixing room for my, my stuff. So, um, this I hope will be a three-part series. This week uh, we're having a little bit of a change. We're going to not have a Wednesday class, so I'll have a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday class here on Zoom. Of course, you YouTubers can tune in anytime to get this stuff. All right. So, what can I do and find in here to build a foundation line? Well, I think what I'm going to choose is this bright green coming across here, which is two-thirds up the painting. So, I'm going to um, make a blue, yellow, gray, using my scrubber. And I'm going to say, okay, this is probably about a third of the way up and build a foundation line. Well, I guess it's a dot, dot, dash, dash type line. It's already drooping. I think it probably goes up just a little bit here. All right. With that, I see that there's kind of an elbow sticking out here with these nice trees coming in. So that would be this area right over here. And then over here is kind of a dip and this is the bank over on this side right here. And then right here is a big gray green right in this area. And you can get a sense of how I'm using line drawing to try to figure out where all these different shapes are going to be. 
and then here is going to be the clump of trees coming in here. There's a dark over here. Big dark in here. And big trunks. We'll get to that in a little bit. Alrighty, so that's my foundation to get started. And now I want to make some lines as to, I don't know if I like the shape of the island too much, but I'll see what I can do here. This is my island in here that I've got to, it's pretty thin right up in here. And this would be island. I really like that green green on there, but I think that might be a little too overpowering to have that much green up there. I think we need it, but maybe not as much. So I'm thinking at this point I'm going to reduce the size of it a little bit and reduce the size of the island a little bit. So that would be a start of where to go with this. All right. So now I'm going to switch brushes and go to a bigger brush and make some bigger, bigger mixtures. I want to make like a gray-green. So we're going to do some blue, gray and some yellow. I want to work up in these trees. And I want to make it real dark for um, a trunk. So I'm going to go blue, gray, red. By the way, we were, in last week's painting, we were painting some um, oranges with our red and yellow. And um, Jan, if you're listening there on Zoom, what uh, I tried, I've got two reds here. This is left over. I experimented with some cad red light. Cad red light with this yellow is a great orange. It's much brighter than that cad red regular that we normally have. <clears throat> All right, with that side note, let me get some and I'm going to use an old, looks like a number 12. It's a good scrubbing old brush. Probably didn't make enough product, but let me get these guys in here. And then I'm going to put some of these darks in here, which would be trunks, I think. And that's what this, this is a red, or it's a blue, red, gray mixture. I'm going to go back to some of this green and put some of that in, in here. And I see this kind of gray area over in here to the right, or to the left, I'm sorry. Got too much of that nasty dark still in here. Put some of that over in here. I get running low on product, as you can see from the overhead, so I'll put some turp in there.
All right, let me get back and take a look at this. And I'll get some of this up in here also. <clears throat> I still have some darks left from that mixture. And I'm just going to bring these darks in here. And I see a few in here as well. <clears throat> and now I'm going to work my darks in this area. few places. I do that with a paper towel. And I'm going to put some of these darks that I have here in the even up in this area as well as in here. All right, that's to get things started off. Alrighty. I'm going to pick this stuff up and I don't have much left. It's very thin, so I'll just pick it up. And that's the noise my scraper is making. Well, now I see that we need some light browns in here, kind of a purple light brown. So let me see what I can do here with uh, some red, Naples, gray. You see I have two piles of white. Uh, this was left over from last week and it's contaminated. So many times I have a contaminated white and a pure white and uh, when making these mixtures sometimes it's good to just have a good old contaminated pile. And that's kind of coming in with a pink brown there. So uh, it's a little dark so I'm going to add some more light to it. And I'm going to use that for this area where the bank is. All right. I'm going to switch over to my... Now I'm going to use this old nasty number 12 again. Loading her up and let's get some of that in. Oop. What am I thinking? I got a lot of room down here. Got some drawing errors, I'm sorry. Which means I gotta do a little fixing things up here a little bit. Let me get my old drawing guy back. So let's go here and here. All right, hope that corrects the problem. Let me get back to putting that base color in for the bank or for the island. And I see some over in here also. I made this mixture too thin. I put a little in here, I think, too. And I think this gets darker as we get closer to the tree and 
don't have any of my dark mixture to blend in with that. Let me see if I can do it with this. I threw some blue, red, and gray into the mixture. And I think that's going to help it down in here. As well as I need some darker stuff down in here. So again, in that mixture, I threw some blue, red, gray, and made it a little darker. All right. Let's make a kind of a similar to this gray green but lighter in here. Now keep in mind we want reflection here and there's some reflections going on in here. So that has to be kept in mind. I think I'll leave this B here but I'll just cover this thing in, in here put the reflection in later. So let me see what I can do with this mixture. I just don't have enough of it. It's just a trickle. So let me move that out of the way. Okay, how are we doing here? We're about 15 minutes into this. And we've got enough time to hopefully get this thing blocked in. So we started with a line drawing and that tells you so much, but then we're starting to fill this in with block in color with value and that tells us a lot more. Alrighty. So let's work in this area in the water. <coughs> so let's make a blue green so I'm doing a blue yellow. This time I'm going to throw in some Naples. Now my green Now let's throw in some dirty white and see how that looks. It's looking pretty good. I like it. All right, I'm going to get my old number 12 in here. Gray that down just a little bit more. It's a very thorough mixture as you can see. And I'm going to put this in various places to make some semblance of water. And I need a little bit more gray in here. I'm doing this really tight one down there so I can cover up that bottom, that my lip that's covered by my shelf here. That's my reflection there. And I'll thin out some areas here for reflection that we can put in later. Alrighty. Now, since we have this mixture, let's throw, throw some more dirty white into it. And let's get that back in here. And fill in some of this upper area. Not where the real bright green is, but...
I'm starting to see some of the limitations of a limited palette right here. But one thing the limited palette does do is give us color harmony. It really gives us a kind of shows you how everything is kind of working together. We don't have some bright color up here grossing us out here. So what I'm doing here is getting rid of some of my halos that are coming through. These little white canvas. If you tone your canvas before class, I applaud you. Then you don't have to do all this stuff. But what I can see is that I'm eliminating some of those light spots. If you don't do them now, you just have to get them later. This is the easiest time to get rid of them. All right. Let me take a sip of my coffee and stand back. Zoomers, do you have any questions before we get into the next step? Well, this is a very useful color. I think I'll pick it up and move it over to the side. I think I've got some left. There we go. This bottom part's pretty thin, so I'll pick that up. All right, with my mixing knife, I'll start on the next mixture. See how we can get a, a bright green out of this. Alrighty, let me get this out of the way. So, let's get some yellow. We're going to work on these brights in here. That's contaminated. Let me move next door. See, that one's got a little bit of blue or something in it. It could probably work. Let me experiment with it. You can see them. Naples is giving it a little bit more of an exotic green look. Could I just a touch of blue? And we're starting to get a little bit more exotic. Let's add some lightener to it. Well, it's light, but it's not that nice green that we have in the reference. But we're going to add a little bit more blue to this and experiment with this side. So, in this pile, we laid off the uh, Naples, and it's coming in a little closer to the green that we see. Not exactly, not even close, but value wise, I think it's doing pretty good. So, let's go more. Yellow, a little bit of blue, and we'll add some white to that. And I'm going to work with that. So I'm going to go to my number 10. And work on this big bright coming across here and then we'll dull it down for some of these darker greens in here I think we have some in here too And I'll change my color just a little bit by getting into this one with a little bit of Naples in it for down in here. And 
And let me get some greens back up in here. And let me get back and take a look. And now we're starting to see a block in of a painting. Alrighty. I'm going to use my knife and soften some of these edges. And this helps with uh, this stage of the painting. And it softens things. And <clears throat> it also eliminates some of those sky holes we have. Well, maybe not that particular stroke. I'm going to add some blue to this mixture. And work in the areas where there's shadow. Added some gray to the mixture. And I'm putting them in with these big bold strokes. And I see some lighter stuff up in here now. I add some of this green to the lighter shades that I see up in. The, they're not as bright as this. I don't want to take away from that. But I want to work over some of these wet parts. And what that does is lighten them up with some of this mixture. I need some more darks over in here. I'll go back to a blue-gray. Too much! Some red to that. Need to get some green in there. Using a blue, red, gray, pretty dark up in here. Putting some overlay here to kind of give it some green tint. That's my cat making the noise back there, wanting attention. All right, let me get back, take a look. Need some more gray up in this area. And I need some more gray up in this area. So by taking those step back or two, if you don't have enough dark or light in an area, just get it in there. Oop. Sorry, hit the camera. So 
So, the reason we call it blocking is because it looks blocking. And that's what we do. Okay, I think I have a bit of a leveling problem. I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. I step back. This looks a little high on one side. So let me dip this just a little. And I think it has a dip in here too, so can do that. Oh, lost my image. By the way, if you need this image, it'll be up on my website, georgecallgreatart.com, under photo references. You should be able to find that in the, you know, on the uh, home page, the, the button for it. And I need some darks down in here. All right, I think that should be working pretty good. Let me do one thing. I'm going to add some white with this kind of, I've got some gray in my brush, and I'm just going to put this reflection in right here. So it's a very light gray. And I'll put some back in here. And I might as well see if I can be successful down in here. And I'm just about out of product, so I have to come back tomorrow on that one. Alrighty. Let me run some stuff over here. It's not. Yeah, I think I need more island here instead of water. It just looks better, balance-wise. All right, for today, that's it. We've covered this thing with a value color. And we will get into tomorrow with balance. What should be darker? What should be lighter? What is the right color balance that we need? And that is tomorrow. And then uh, our last phase on Thursday, we'll be getting into detail. But you can't do detail, and I don't want you to get into detail till you have all this foundation stuff in. And um, I think what you would describe my style of painting and teaching is impressionistic painting. That's why I spend so much time on the initial parts of this painting. The drawing, the balance, the block ends, the values. Because if you've got all that, you can really go a long way on this. Now, we could probably do better with a different green. I'm experimenting with this green because um, I just think to get to this green that we have in the reference, we have to get out of our limited palette and use some of Viridian. So I'll experiment with that. Uh, tomorrow morning before class and see if that would be an appropriate thing to do um, for this light area in here. Just trying to get some of the canvas halos coming through to eliminate some of those. All right, that should be it. All right, with that, YouTubers, thank you for coming by. And we will see you tomorrow and uh, for part two. And looking forward to balance day tomorrow. All right, with that, we'll say bye-bye.